So you bought an uni or other small portable pizza oven and you have had some absolute disasters getting amazing pizza out of it. It's burnt a lot of the time or it just cooks unevenly or are you about to start making pizza? You need to watch this video first. I'm gonna make sure you have all the information that you need to be producing the absolutely best quality Neapolitan pizza that's gonna knock everybody else's socks off. Roll the intro. Neapolitan style pizza, how amazing is it? I love those slightly charred edges, the fluffy crust, but it, with intense flavor, the simple sauce, the quality cheese, it is amazing. And that's why you guys are here because we all want to just make or be able to make that kind of style pizza. Well, let's work our way up though. Now I'm not gonna get very technical because I believe that most of you just wanna be able to make amazing pizza without having to have a chemistry degree. So I'm just gonna keep it simple. So first of all, the dough. Now, without question, you're going to need to have double O flour. Now I bet some of you have bought the double O flour, gone ahead and followed the instructions, whacked your temperature of your oven up to 950 plus degrees Fahrenheit, and then burnt the crap out of your pizza. Well, what they don't tell you, and what a lot of people don't tell you is that there's different kinds of double O flour. The flour you need for these ovens to cook at 950 degrees is very specialized. Now, amongst those flours, a very popular one is the Caputo Pizzeria flour. That's not always available at your local grocery store or even in your area. I've been struggling to find it where I am right now. So, I have got double O flour and most of you will be able to get double O flour, which produces a great result but it's lower protein, which means you can't cook it at 950 plus degrees. You're gonna cook it slightly lower, and that's what we're going to do. But let's start with the dough. Now, there's different ways of making dough. You can start with a, there's a dough that's ready in a couple of hours, or you can have like a three or four day sourdough that's a three or four stage process of making this amazing dough, and don't get me wrong, it is amazing. But I think for most people, what's gonna get you amazing results is just a dough that sort of proves overnight or a two-day fermented dough that's going to give you some of the best results that you can get now don't get me wrong those other doughs they're fancy and complicated they are amazing and we're going to tackle those in future episodes but for now for the day to day you just want to have some you're having people over tomorrow night you want to make some amazing pizza and wow them then i'm going to show you how to do that today so let's get started with actually making some pizza dough. Now before we get started, please hit that subscribe button. I would really, really appreciate it. We're doing so well here, but I just need some more subscribers to get myself on the way. So please, like, subscribe, I, it would mean a lot to me. Okay, so let's reiterate. This is a method and a recipe for you to get good results out of the gate. There are more complicated and technical methods, but like I said, we want good pizza today. It'll take practice to get to the next level, so start here and follow my steps. And please, dough and pizza nerds and purists, this method is to get people good, quick results straight away, because I've seen so many disasters and people who need help. I've had my own, and I wish I'd had something like this video to watch before I got started. So we are making a manageable 67% hydration dough. That is the percentage of water to flour. Some people make a really wet dough, almost 80%, but this is a good place to start. First step, add some really hot water from your tap to your bowl along with your salt. You can add salt at the end, some people do, but I don't think in this small volume it makes a huge difference. The important thing is here is putting your liquid in first so you don't have unmixed flour at the bottom of your bowl. Now you'll see I placed all but, a, but a, about 100 mils of water into the bowl and I've saved that 100 mils to rehydrate yeast. I recommend that you do. You'll often see people say it's not necessary, but in my opinion, it always speeds up the process. So make sure the water you use to rehydrate the dough or the yeast isn't as hot as the water in the bowl. Okay, so we're gonna start adding the flour about a third at a time. Um, just place it in and make sure that it is well incorporated. 
So when you've added in all your flour and you've got to this stage, add in your yeast and continue mixing until you have a nice, smooth, well-developed dough. Once we're done, we're going to take the temperature of it to make sure that we're in the right ballpark for the yeast to develop properly. Ideally, we want the temperature to be around 25 degrees or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's too cold, it'll take a long time for the yeast to activate. So once it's ready, wrap it up, keep it somewhere warm for the bulk fermentation. That's basically the first fermentation that gets the yeast working. When it's about doubled, we're going to weigh it. Now, I've done this because I know a one kilogram of flour will make about seven dough balls at about 250 grams, but let's find out exactly so we have seven equal balls of dough. Now, you don't need to scoop it first. I just started doing that uh, to get it out of the bowl and then remembered I needed to weigh it. So 1,850 grams divided by seven is 264 grams. So we will now divide the dough into seven 264-gram-ish balls. Okay, so this is a very important step. If you want nice looking pizza, your dough balls must be nicely shaped and uniform. If they aren't, your pizzas won't be. This is one of the crucial steps to getting your pizza to look good. So there's lots of ways to get nicely shaped balls. You can use the rolling technique like I'm showing here that bakers use, or there's the folding over method from the outside, and then you pinch it off at the bottom to seal it. This helps build structure to the dough and tension on the surface. That's what we are after. It might take some practice, but keep going and you'll get it. And hey, if it's not perfect, who cares? It's still going to be delicious. You will get there and it does take practice. Now, once they're done, I like to keep them in a kind of flatter container or trays with a tight lid. Lightly oils to stop it from sticking. It, that's ideal. But if you don't have a lid, make sure the dough is well covered with wrap so it doesn't dry out. Then it goes into the fridge overnight. If you're making this in the morning and then pull it out around noon to one o'clock the next day, the dough will be ready to start baking around 5 p.m. in time for dinner. Okay, in the next clip, I'm going to make two pizzas so you can see the techniques twice. Make sure you watch the second one as I go into a bit more detail with the turning peel. Okay, team, so here we are. We're ready to get started. Now, we've got everything set up in order as we're going to work, which is very important get everything prepped up in advance so you see I've got my tomato sauce ready there I've got my pepperoni I've got some Italian sausage I got some fresh mozzarella I got some grana padano I've got some uh, dried mozzarella there as well and I've got some cornmeal which I'm going to use for sprinkling on my peel um, I've got my thermometer and now I've got my butane lighter as well and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in a minute but I was lucky enough to have one of my neighbors make me this amazing peel, which fits just perfectly. I've also got a turning peel, which you'll see there. Um, that does make things a lot easier. I, I was kind of skeptical. I've never really worked with them before, but yeah, it does work and it does make your life a lot easier and you'll see in a minute. So look, we're going to get started. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is light the fire up pizza oven. So let's get started with that and I'll show you the easiest way possible to do it, and that's how I do it. Okay, so here's your ash tray, I guess it is. And um, you've got your wood hardwood pellets in here as per recommended. I don't use the only ones because you don't need to, they're just hardwood pellets. And I've got my butane lighter. This is This will do the job faster than anything, to be honest with you. You don't need to go and spend extra money on all natural fire lighters that you know is an extra cost for no reason and once we've got a bit of a flame going we're going to put it back into the oven Have a look. See, that's going pretty good. We can boost it up a bit if we want to. Grab another little spot. Now, one of the issues that I've seen with the uni is this flue right here. Now, this that opens up your flue and closes your flue. And really, I don't think it's all that necessary to close it if you have your um, oven running properly. But it just seems to close on its own sometimes, which is not ideal. So I've taken an ingenious fix of attaching a twig 
in between it and that keeps it in place. I've seen a few other people online have the same issue. It's not the end of the world, but like I said, I've just got a twig there. If anybody else has a, a better idea or a proper solution, let me know because I'd really appreciate that. Take our trusty scoop here. We're going to add just a couple of scoops for now before we get it filled up. Get that fire going nice and good. Try not to spill it like me. There we go. Now here are my dough balls. You can see they're nicely risen now two days later. Um, they're probably a little bit fluffy right now, but that's okay. I took them out, I took these out about four hours ago, so maybe just a little bit less, um, but it's still gonna give a really good result. So, pretty excited. So, I can see the flame is going really good now, so let's have a look. That is beautiful, look at that. That is just gorgeous. We can see the flame kissing the roof of the uh, oven, which is perfect. And um, we're just gonna do a quick temperature read. And we'll see where we're at. Five sixty. So we'll let that heat up a little bit longer. Um, that's in Fahrenheit, of course. And um, so we'll wait till we get about eight hundred, and then we're going to start. Got a dough ball. We're going to put that in the flour on both sides. If it sticks a little bit, just dust it with your hands. That's what, that'll be good. So you can do this any way you like. I have my own method. I really like, and it depends as well how soft or how hard your dough is, but basically you can start off with, like I said, flour on both sides, and then you can just press it and stretch it out. I like to maintain that crust around the edge. Another way you can do it, people, people have the, the flapping method, they can stretch and flap, but you see, I don't really need to do this. This dough is really quite light right now, and it's easy to shape it and it's been resting, so this doesn't have a lot of, it's not pulling back from the gluten. And if you're first starting out, I recommend that you go smaller rather than bigger. So make your first pizza not so wide. And let's make sure we've got a nice crust here, because I, I kind of like that just for the presentation. And you'll see the amazing puff I get out of this dough. It's been maturing now for a few days. There we go. So a lot of people can garnish this here. And then they put it on, then they transfer it over to their appeal. So we, we can do that as well. It's not such a big deal. And then we'll reshape it. Um, but you can do it right on the peel as well. That's what I've been doing. But if those make, it might be a little bit wet. So I think I might transfer it over to the peel so it doesn't stick so much. Let's give it a go. Nice, even layer of sauce. Bit of a splash of olive oil. And we're gonna put some grana padano or parmesan cheese on it. Just a sprinkle, because I quite like that. Now we're gonna transfer that over to the peel. And at this stage, I don't even think you really need to have corn flour on here, because it's, it's pretty, it's moving pretty good as, good as it is. Okay, just check the temperature. We're at a perfect temperature right now of about 800 degrees and we're going to launch it. That's Fahrenheit, of course. Um, let's just launch our pizza. Try to get it towards the front if you can. It's not too far back to avoid that high temperature. And we'll put our lid on and we'll check the back in here in 20 seconds. That looks pretty good to me. And I think it's coming up nicely. Now we've got our turning peel here. This just makes life just a little bit easier. We go we'll pop that in for another 20 seconds I'll be honest I'm new with the turning peel so I'm not the most handy at it that should be about ready let's have a look one more turn and I think we're good There we go. There's a beautiful pizza. How amazing is this dough? Look at those edges there. How beautiful is this pizza? Okay, so let's just see that again. The first pizza was great, but I think I did a slightly better job with the pepperoni. What do you think?
So again, the dough goes in the flour and use whatever technique works for you to open the dough. Now, one of the things I didn't mention is please, please, please don't overload your pizza with too many toppings. I kind of think of overloaded pizza or over cheesed pizza as kind of vulgar. It's out of balance. And if you're using really good quality ingredients, you want to be able to taste them. So keep that in mind. Also, it won't cook properly in this style of pizza or even in the oven if it's overloaded. So you want a nice even layer of sauce, a nice even layer of cheese, and for this pepperoni pizza, a nice layer of pepperoni. I like pepperoni on top, some people like it on the bottom, whatever works for you. Now when you're first starting, I suggest using some cornmeal on your peel just to help launch it. I don't do that anymore as I've got a great system down now. I also have some stronger flour, which helps too. But if you're using lower protein flour, use the cornmeal or even just plain flour until you get the hang of it. Also, I've become a lot less scared of launching my pizza to the back of the oven. You can see it's a bit close to the front here, which isn't bad, but try to get it just a bit further back. Okay, now with using your turning peel, you want it to come at it from the left with the handle pointing as far to the left as you can get it. So slide it under your pizza and then rotate the handle to the right to get that turn. Turn it every 20 to 30 seconds until you're happy with how it's done, and then you're ready to eat. So here we go. Look at our beautiful pepperoni pizza. That crust is just beautiful and it's puffed up so nicely. Look at it. Nice little bit of charring. And you look, I didn't have to worry or stress about this pizza. With the lower temperature, you have lots of time to get it just perfect. And it's not overcooked. If you look at the bottom, the bottom is just beautiful. So, this is pretty perfect, I think. Um, maybe you've got other ideas, but I think this is a beautiful pizza and I'm so happy with it. And again, let's look, look, look at this dough structure here. Look at that. That is fantastic. How beautiful is it? It's nice and light. It's got so much depth. Nicely fermented. Great stuff. So my pepperoni pizza. The crust has been fermenting now for a few days. The sauce, simple, perfect. Like I said, I've got the recipe for you, but this is so good. That dough is so nice. It's so soft. The bottom has just got, got a little bit of crispness, as does the crust. You've got that wood fired chard action happening. The uni fire uh, is a great little oven, has a couple of flaws. But for what it is, I'm traveling my motor home. It is perfect that you could have this kind of quality pizza at home out of this. Now, like I said, just follow my steps. If you follow my steps, steps, you won't go wrong. And it's so, it's not simple, it takes a bit of practice, but watch this definitely before you start it. And uh, hopefully you won't have any major disasters when you're making your pizza. I'm gonna enjoy this and please, can you like, subscribe, do all those great things for me? I really appreciate the support. So we'll see you next time and enjoy your pizza making. Subscribe, subscribe.